Good evening, Fright Fiends. Tis Ireland the Gore Lord. Uh, God to some, devil to others, but a film buff to all. You've come back into my lair whilst I'm trying to, well, uh, connect with some old friends. You see, this old devil is in need of some, you know, extra work, and these guys have been known to hire at random. You know, since you have such impeccable timing, allow me to take you back to another dimension of horror. Join me now as I stick my hooks into the 1987 bloodbath known as Hellraiser. is the 1987 directorial debut of legendary horror author Clive Barker and stars Andrew Robinson, Claire Higgins, Ashley Lawrence, Oliver Smith, Sean Chapman, and the incomparable Doug Bradley. We're first introduced to Frank Cotton, who has traveled to a distant land in search of a special relic. What's your pleasure, Mr. Cotton? The box. Well, apparently not manicures. We then find out that Frank's new puzzle box is, well, a bit more than a novelty, and whoever did these walls should be drawn and quartered, and that hooks look amazing going through latex. The room then begins to look a lot like somewhere I'd like to live, and we get our first real glimpse of the entities conjured by the mysterious box, the Cenobites led by their glorious hell priest, Pinhead. We next meet Frank's brother Larry and his wife Julia, who are moving into the Cotton family home, where they find that not only has Frank been staying there, but that he likes to keep the place in tip-top shape. They're interrupted by a phone call from Larry's daughter Kirsty, and while the two discuss convening, Julia finds some photos that belong to Harvey Weinstein. I, I, I mean to Frank, and... Her mind begins to wonder. Despite paying a moving company to handle their move, Larry is leading the charge, and soon utters the same words John Holmes used to utter to his co-stars. Don't worry, it'll get through. Meanwhile, Kirsty arrives and is immediately me too by the movers. Excuse me. My lucky day. Hi. Do you want to buy a bed? Not much only before having the kitchen sink spurt all over her. Speaking of spurts, Julia gets into reminiscing about meeting Frank back when she and Larry were preparing for marriage. You're Julia, right? That's right. Who are you? I'm Frank. I'm brother Frank. Oh, yes. I, uh, I came for the wedding. Well, can I come in or not? Yes. With Kirsty present and Larry the movers about, Julia retreats to the room where Frank met his demise to look at more photos and think back to when they became uh, exercise partners. Julia, Julia, Julia. Her head flooded with memories. Her hoo-ha flooded with, well, you know. Larry and the movers inched the bed closer only. The blood seeps into the floor, bringing the carcass of Brother Frank screeching back to life. After Larry gets his hands stitched up, it's then time for one stiff highbrow dinner. 
where he recounts his little injury to Kirsty, her date Steve, and some friends. As Kirsty is awed by Steve's butt gulping skills, <coughs> Julia's mind is elsewhere, and she retreats to finish what she started before. When. He's back, and he needs blood to continue his rejuvenation. Of course, Julia isn't interested in bringing him any victims, but after hmm, further remembering that it's old fornication Frank she's dealing with, the lure of his skinless man muscles seals the deal, and she's off to the nearest singles bar, where she's approached by a lonely man looking for some companionship. She takes him home, and after a bit of hesitation, What's wrong? Uh, just one minute. Too much drink. Empty the old bladder. Did you lock this? Since the poor man never got to relieve his bladder, would Frank get a buzz slurping up bo- Eh, uh, never mind. Julia's in the midst of cleaning up the soul-sucked corpse when Larry arrives back home. She feigns sickness, and we see that Frank isn't the only pervert in the Cotton family. You want a cookie, little girl? Julia returns to find that Frank is indeed coming back. He tells her he must continue to feed before the Cenobites return, and that he has cheated their little death game. Meanwhile, Kirsty starts a new job at the pet store, where she's met with an upset customer named Karen. Where's the manager? And sees a strange drifter take to the back of the store, where he decides to get a head start on the way you mortals will soon be eating thanks to the WEF. Oh my god. After giving Herr Klaus a raging hard on, the man is asked to leave, and we find Julia has brought Frank yet another victim. It soon becomes apparent that his flesh, strength, and confidence are all growing rapidly. He shows Julia the mysterious puzzle box, the Lament Configuration, which he somehow got back, and explains to Julia more about the Cenobites, his demise, and how hooks rip into latex. Julia is committed to helping get that outer skin back on Frank's shaft, and we next find her watching a boxing match with Larry, something she wouldn't normally do. Upon realizing that Julia is unfazed by the violence, he gets turned on and decides to have a bit of fun with her. Only Frank is acting like he just got piss poor election results and is on a real tear. <coughs> And he can wait for foreskin on his veiny throbber no longer, so he moves into the bedroom to disrupt Larry's little post-punch-out penetration party. But for Julia, the thought of Frank killing Larry is almost as unbearable as Larry inching his way into her sacred puzzle box, and she essentially tells both men the same thing at once. Tis then that Larry vents to Kirsty about Julia's strange behavior and asks her to stop by and pay a visit. Only when she does, she sees Julia entering the home with yet another victim. <laughs> Kirsty comes in and sees both the dying man and her now monstrous uncle, finds the lament configuration, throws it out the window, and runs for her life. She retrieves the box and gets away, only to collapse from exhaustion, awakening in the hospital. Uh, the doctor, despite not knowing what it is nor its significance, leaves the demon conjuring puzzle box with the young lady and promptly exits, where she quickly solves the puzzle. Suddenly we see Joy Behar spread eagle. I, I mean, the, the wall opens up and... 
Into a labyrinth she goes, only it's there she's met by the creature credited as the engineer. Something of a Twitter moderator come to life. She runs, screaming in terror as the engineer closes in. Only she makes it back into the hospital, virtually unscathed, where she decides to play with the lament configuration some more. Tis then we learn the contractors who did the walls of the Cotton Home were the same team of jackasses who laid the grout at the hospital. And we then see the arrival of the leather-clad demons yet again, where Pinhead tells Kirsty the same thing male porn stars say after an extreme gangbang. The box. You opened it. We came. Kirsty wisely tells the Cenobites that Frank is alive and well, and that he's cheated death, offering to have a bit of a trade of sorts, uh, her safety in exchange for his ass. Meanwhile, Frank and Julia need to get gone, but Larry comes home, and just like R. Kelly's home movies. It's best you see for yourself. Frank gets his outer layer complete, and now that his little cotton squirter has foreskin again, the murderous couple waste no time putting it to good use. Only Kirsty comes in, panicked and demanding to see her daddy. But the Cenobites return, and it's now time for someone to pay. Will Kirsty survive? Will Frank and Julia live to love it up another day? Will the Cenobites ever fucking hire me? Hellraiser is exceptional in that it's a movie written and directed by the very man who penned the source novella, and it holds its tone and tension throughout the entirety of its run. Now, did Clive Barker and company have to work around way too low a budget? Yes. Are some of the effects dated? Of course. But this lovely frightmare of a feature has an amazing story, is largely well acted, and was strong enough to launch a franchise that is still going to this very day. While the budget limitations show themselves on many occasions, Hellraiser is nothing short of a well-executed nightmare, courtesy of one of horror's most ingenious minds. I give this hook shooting SM gore fest three and a half out of five screeching franks. Oh, and to the mortals who've taken the time to comment, like, subscribe, and tell your fiendish friends about this handsome old devil, I salute you from the bottom of my hellbound heart. I'm Erlik the Gore Lord, and I'll be seeing you all sooner or later. Stop the surprise. I see.